now I'm envious of David and Nell. Uh, my wife Leanne helped me put put some uh, photos together to, to try and get our point across. I'd love her to be sitting here um, putting it up on the screen, but she's currently at home taking a thousand litres of diesel out of two, two, uh, two silt scoops that I've got going cleaning mud out, but dry at home at the moment. Um, and she can't be everywhere. She's pretty capable, but she can't be everywhere. Um, uh, just going back to the previous speakers, I, I don't know why you blokes have got uh, got too much to worry about because we've we've been through hell and back in the in the marshes, and uh, the passion that I, that I saw from different speakers here this morning, after lunch from from lunch till now, uh, I reckon you're well on the way to, to to taking this forward because it's that passion that that has been missing. Um, we've had some brilliant people in in, in our organisation trying to fight to keep water in the environment and, and for, for our landscape, but I think it's, um, it's way behind the passion that you've got in the room here today. Um, I better just introduce myself. Richard wanted me to do that. Um, uh, as you know, my name's Gary Hall. I'm, I'm from the Macquarie Marshes. We're in the Murray-Darling Basin, and, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and change things around. We're not, we're not busted. We've... Um, We've still got a bit of fight in us, and uh, fortunately, the Commonwealth has been buying water, returning it back to the to the environment, and to to some some men, some of the many beneficial uh, flow-on effects that returning water to the environment has. Um, I was interested this morning. We were down at the ABC. Terry was giving some interviews, and and uh, there seems to be this um, bit of an issue up here about. Um, about greenies and, and, and industry. Well, as a cattle producer um, and, and one of the younger generation in our, in our area, uh, I, I think that, that our organisation down there in the marshes are pretty proud of, of being able to be both. And I, I think listening to David's um, presentation there before, I think a lot of your producers have got that up here too. Um, so I'm not scared of being classified as a greenie. I'm, I'm pretty proud and you'll see from our pictures that um, working in balance with the environment and, and Scott gave a brilliant demonstration here this morning of how the Aboriginal people did it for 20,000 years, I think he said. Um, rather than trying to tame the environment, work with it and, and that's the basis of, of my presentation. I'm, I'm passionate about having people in the landscape. Um, our, our, our system has changed a lot with the increased water extraction upstream and, and our production systems for grazing have become marginalised and a lot of people have absentee landholders um, and, that, and that's not good for our community. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm passionate about uh, the kids, uh, the, the, pe the people that live on, on their properties in the marshes and, and like you people that, that um, still live in the landscape. I think it's extremely important in this whole debate. Um, sorry, getting back to where the marsh are, we're in, in the Murray-Darling Basin. Um, uh, our, the valley that we're in, Macquarie Valley, uh, it's a winter-fed rainfall system in the northern section of the basin. And uh, so, so it's reasonably important the flow-on downstream effects are, are arriving um, uh, in, in the Barwon-Darling system. Um, they're quite unique because a lot of the other, other um, flows from the northern basin, are, are like your system, are summer fed. So, so ours are arriving in the, in the spring, uh, early summer, when, when, there's, when there's, there's not much other flow. Um, now, a few of you uh, might, might be interested. Our property that, that our family's had for four generations is, um, is called the Mole. Um, I, I don't have a good grasp of why. Um, it, was, it was settled in the in the uh, early 1860s and um, the, uh, I think there was a governor of New South Wales with a, with a name of, of Lieutenant Mole or, or in other areas it means land jutting out in the water and that, that's all I've been able to pick up and, and that, that's all my father could find but um, uh, I'm pretty proud of the, the, the property name, it's probably not, it's not um, great, great as far as, as, far as um, uh, marketing goes, but people do remember it. <laughs> now, let's see if I can work this. Now, I, I run the property with my family, and uh, 
and we produce um, beef cattle. Um, oh, we're still going forward. How do I go back? How do I go back? I'll be back here. We're going back. Yeah, right. Eh? So we produce um, Angus beef cattle in the marshes. Um, there's plenty of other breeds of cattle that, that are produced in, the, in our area. The marshes are, are 200,000 hectares. Um, mo most of the property sizes vary from um, from 5,000 hectares that we run 700 or 800 cows on to uh, to up to 50,000 hectares. A lot of the, the, the country was surveyed a, across the marshes, so a lot of the a lot of the uh, properties have have um, say a third marsh country and the rest of it dry land uh, and I'll be pretty excited to get a go at some of this organic beef tonight and um, test the meat eating quality of these Herefords. Um, so uh, as I said kids in the landscape because uh, I, don't, I don't I think there's been a few of you here today in, including Scott that that um, were, were disappointed that you all had, have to go through this fight again um, uh, with the change, uh, potential change of government policy, but uh, believe me, it never ends. We've been through it in Macquarie, and uh, we get a few good years. The marshes get a bit of a go, and and we back off, and then bang, she's back on again. We've got a change of government in New South Wales. Um, uh, it, the the Labor government in New South Wales has has traditionally supported the environment more than the, than the coalition and, and um, we're, we're really feeling the effects of that. Now the, I noticed Tom was talking about water sharing plan reviews, we've, we've just right now gone through a water sharing plan review and we're treading on some pretty hot coals with the, with the water that the, the state government own, uh, the water in the water sharing plan and the, and the, and the water that the state owns, um, what could happen with, with the outcome of that, of that review. Um, the, the marshes uh, are, are a, a flow through wetland, so as I spoke, our contribution to the bow and darling is extremely important. But it's um, the the uh, the growth is only summer growth. But being a bit further south, we get some pretty pretty good frost down our way, and and um, everything hays off during winter. So our, our production system is based on on um, on summer growth. Um, our our pastures, native pastures. Uh, don't respond from rainfall in the marsh area itself. So you can see in that photo that there's, there's some kambangi there, but it, it's mainly mainly cooch and, and reed in the background. And uh, it can rain all it likes, and and the, and, the, and it doesn't give give the trigger those that plants those plants need to um, to go through and, and fulfil their growing cycle. It makes pretty good breeding country. We we for cattle we don't um, we don't try and Fattle, uh, fatten cattle on our on our flood country, um, and it we have most of the producers in the marshes have targeted the uh, the feedlot industry. We get them up to 400 kilos, and they go on a truck. Uh, there's lots of photos of kids and cattle because that's what we do. Um, uh, the connection with the with the landscape and and um, any of the any of the good producers at home are, are living are living in the landscape, and it concerns me um, that, that that there's that there's more and more um, people with with a removed connection from the landscape with the landscape. And if if there's um, overgrazing that that happens in our environment, you can bet on it that they don't live there. Um, uh, to to prevent to prevent this and and many other issues associated with upstream water extraction, uh, we, we, we've formed a, a, the Macquarie Marsh Environmental Landholders Association, of which, which I'm the current chair. Um, I'm excited that we've, we've been through the uh, succession changes. We've got, we've got some good young people, but we're, we're able to, to um, gain the experience from, from the people that have, that, that many of which have you, you've had contact with before, Sue Jones and Eric Fisher and Peter McClellan and my father who fought for the marshes for 40 years. So um, we're hoping to, to collect that, that knowledge and, and put it in with our modern land use practices to, to be able to provide 
a beneficial environmental outcome. And, and that's, that's how we see ourselves as environmental service providers, because uh, the landscape that, that we in, that we're in, re requires management. And, and I, I'm very interested to talk to the blokes here from Australian Bush, Bush Heritage in how, um, how their system seems to work, because where we are, uh, I've, got, I've got a lot of boundary with nature, Macquarie Marsh Nature Reserve, and um, I, I can see the value of, of, um, of protecting areas, but, but I have also noticed that, that once management is removed from the system, that there's a degradation that takes place. And, and I, I know that, that a lot of governments are, um, are well-meaning, but, but whether the outcome that they plan is, is, uh, is going to be ac acceptable for society in 10, 20 or 50 years. Um, the history of land use in the marshes, we've uh, been grazed for about as long as cattle have been grazing out in this country. Uh, as I said, native pastures. Um, we had a, a dam built up in the marsh, upstream of the marshes in 1967 and, uh, and that's when things started to go crook. Um, we, uh, the, the annual average flows don't really mean a lot, but that's what the figures were, were worked out on. The annual average flow of the Macquarie was said to be 470,000 megs, um, and by the 1980s it was uh, 898,000 megalitres of extracted licences issued out. So um, it's double the, the flow of the river, if that, if that, if that makes sense. And, and when you say a little bit, like I'm thinking that a little bit here on the, on the Thompson at Longreach might be for somebody to have an irrigation farm. When you say a little bit, just remember, remember those figures. Like a little bit might be a two or three inch pump watering his loosened sprinkler, but um, turn around a few times and the, and the pump might just happen to be as big as this room. Uh, as, far, as far as licences go, the licence is written on paper, paper can change, people change, politicians change, governments change. So um, uh, Vaughan gave a pretty impressive uh, speech here this morning, and, and, uh, and, uh, but maybe if he gets in a room with Barnaby, it mightn't be the same outcomes. So um, I, I, just, uh, I, I, I just want to help you, and I, I hope that our, our case can... can uh, be, be a bit of an example of your what not to do. We're, we're pretty proud of what we've done, and we've got the Commonwealth buying water, and, and 400 and what is it, 422 million dollars have been spent in our valley returning water to the environment. That's just not for the marshes. That's for the for the flow-on effect into the Barwon and and down into the Darling and 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 the Murray Mouth. But that um, that's a cost to every taxpayer uh, right across Australia because of the inadequacies of, of state government. And, and uh, that, that's, uh, that's po possibly my strongest message here today, is that, that you guys don't want to have to go through that. Um, I, the one, one main thing, like trying to manage our landscape with, with uh, less than half the water, because now that the Commonwealth has stepped in and started purchasing water, we've... Um, We've, we've clawed back, there's, there's 160 in, 160 in the water sharing plan, there's about 48 in the, in the state government water holding and then, and then 100 in the, in the, um, in the Commonwealth. The, um, the, uh, the changes that, is that has made to our landscape have been incredible because it's gone, the, the marshes used to be, be wet for a lot of the year but included a, a short drying phase of a couple of months. Um, the, the, the water table was up pretty high. So when the floods came, uh, the, when the flows came, the, the water went down that far, ran down a crack, spread over the country, filled up, got together and, and went on for, for on-river flows. But, but now we're, we've only got a couple of months that we deliver that environmental water in, and maybe three at best. Um, and the, the, uh, the country's dry and parched, and it, and it takes a long time. So we've gone from, from a 200,000 hectare marsh prior to development. We, we had our biggest release ever this year and, and we wet between 40 and 50,000 hectares. So, so although we've got this water left, because, because 
natural system has been changed, even if we got the same amount of water back in a managed system, we couldn't get as, as many results, as many hectares wet with, with that water. What, what it's also doing is changing the, um, I just have to click forward until I... Oh no, we're out. <laughs> I'm up to a cuddle. <laughs> what else it's done is change the uh, change the the growth um, because we've we've lost our median floods. Uh, the 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 median floods are what our landscape evolved on. The the high floods. This is a picture I was after. The big floods still occur. When, if we get a rain event comes across our catchment, um, most of the irrigators are, um, have got on-farm storages. They're flat out pumping the water off their, off their field, they call them, their, their irrigation field. That goes into the on-farm and they don't want to touch, touch uh, the downstream flows or the, or the dam spills. But they, um, so bang, we, get, we still get the big floods, whether it be one in 10, one in 20, uh, whenever. Um, we still get the little flows. A little flow is our current environmental water delivery, or or our or our or down, downstream trib flows. But we don't get the medium flows. And th this is what's happening in areas to, to what what was marsh country. We're getting we're getting red gum regeneration. Um, and to me, that's not a healthy landscape. Uh, so so it's not it's not just the the loss of flooding for 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 um for the environment. It's a change of the environment. Now, um, Richard and plenty of others have been hassling us for, for production figures to, um, to uh, be able to put to the Basin Authority to um, say, right, oh, the irrigators can give us so many megs, uh, so much production per megalitre of water. Our change didn't occur overnight. It, it, it took a generation to, to happen. You can see in the background of a couple of these photos, um, the dead trees, and, and you saw plenty before in some of those presentations. So um, the, the, the change took nearly 40 years to happen, and, and it becomes extremely dif difficult to measure that change. So um, some of my advice to you guys, seeing I'm getting hassled, is to um, be, be very careful who you trust. Um, uh, how much is a little bit, because once they, once they start, they won't stop. And... Uh, and the, um, don't leave anything to hearsay. Monitor everything you can, absolutely everything you can. Because now we're trying to say, oh yeah, Dad said this was all reed bed. That doesn't stand up. You've, you've got to absolutely monitor, even if it's just going out to where the flood water came to in 2010 with your GPS and pinpointing a site and writing it down. Uh, monitor absolutely everything you, you get. and. Uh, just be a little bit weary of, of consultants and experts because they're not always on your side. <laughs>